Hello everyone, welcome to Real Talk, uh, the show that aims to uh, bring you uh, interesting stories, useful insights, uh, and maybe even inspiring ideas from uh, some of the uh, movers and shakers in the uh, startup ecosystem in Southeast Asia. My name is James Vong, uh, I am a co-host, and let me introduce you to my beautiful co-host, Lin Tai, uh, and she will introduce our honor guest today. Hello everyone. Uh, so today we have Justin Nguyen as our special guest. Uh, Justin is currently an investor, um, but he's not only an investor, he's also an entrepreneur as well as an engineer by trade. Um, on a personal note, Justin and I met about three years ago, and uh, back then I was still struggling with my startup, and Justin and I met at a conference, and he approached me and offered to help and guide uh, with his vast amounts of experience, and I found it very useful to have him just as a sounding board uh, throughout my early years. Um, so uh, now that Justin's transitioned into uh, a, an investor role, I find it very interesting. That's why we want to talk to him today to find out you know, how his entrepreneurship experience has really helped guide uh, the startups that he's invested in. Um, so Justin, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you yeah, very welcome, much. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you both for having me. Thank you for the, the lovely intro. Why don't we start off with uh, talking about some of the startups, right? How has your experience in you know, being an entrepreneur and starting all these companies, how has that really affected your I investor perspective? Yeah. So I remember being an entrepreneur and I remember all the things I didn't like about venture capital uh, when I was an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> uh, oftentimes the being late for meetings, the missed meetings, last minute cancellations. Uh, as an entrepreneur, that's, you know, that, that, that venture capital meeting, that VC meeting was probably the most important meeting of your day, right? right? Yes. And having been there, uh, two companies having raised a bunch of money across the last 19 years, sitting in that waiting, uh, that waiting room, waiting, having it cancel last minute. Um, there's a respect I have for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship that, that, that I bring with me uh, that uh, dictates very much how, kind of how we treat them on a pretty holistic level, how, how I treat them on a very holistic level, uh, from, from taking meetings at ideation, because I love entrepreneurship, right, uh, to making sure that we're on time. And of course, inevitably, you know, if there's an emergency, it happens, but that you do it in a, in a respectful way. Um, is one. Um, the second part is that we're ex-entrepreneurs and so we know the struggle, right? And so much of the time the struggle isn't, um, you know, it's, it's the day-to-day, -day, right? And so, so I, think, I think we're able to be good partners uh, if ex-entrepreneurs are actually able to be good partners with actually current entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's, that's maybe a bit unique to my firm. That's something I hope I bring to the ecosystem here, right? So uh, it's fun, yeah. I actually all, always say that uh, the day I forget yeah. Right. The day I get complacent and I forget about that's going to be the day I, I, I stop doing venture. Right. That's going to be the right time when I start getting cynical about taking meetings. Um, you know, of course, we see a wide variety of, of, of business plans, some good, some not. Uh, so, or so, some you agree with, some you don't. Um, but you have to remember that the courage it took that entrepreneur, no matter, <clears throat> no matter whether you like the idea or not, uh, whether you think the market's big enough or not, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the courage it took to actually step out and create that company, right? And, and, and I, say, I always say that, that if I ever forget that, it's time to stop. You know, one of the things for me, is, after having been an entrepreneur and going back to venture, is that it actually really is hard for me to say no, right? I mean, a, as a venture capitalist, you spend 99% of your time saying no. And I just find it so painful now, whereas before, you know, I would justify it in my head all these different business reasons why, yeah. right? So, you know, when you're sitting in these meetings yeah. and you know it's going to be a no. Yeah. Like, how, how does that how does it affect you, yeah. right? And and how did how has that changed the way you talk to an entrepreneur and and yeah. you know kind of really yeah. hopefully guide them even though it's a no? Yeah, that's actually a great question, right? One of the hardest things about transitioning into venture capital for me actually was when I was doing my startup. Uh, every every hour I spent with my company, right, the wee hours of the night, you knew you you could translate it to something very tangible, 
right? Uh, the next day, the next month, right? At most, right? Maybe the next quarter, right? As an investor, you do end up saying no a lot, right? So actually how I view productivity, my own productivity, uh, had to change and evolve over the last uh, three, four years that I've been doing this, right? And so part of that being productive, quote unquote, right? Uh, when I'm sitting in that meeting where it's very likely a no, either, and it could be for a very solid reason, like they're, they're a good company, but they're a little bit too early for us. Right. What I try to do is I try to add value. I try to ask them the questions that they should be asking themselves, right? And and hopefully hopefully that will spark something, right? I don't claim to have the answers, right? I'm genuinely interested in 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 uh, in the answers to those questions, and so I ask them questions that I hope will enhance their deck, their pitch, uh, their business. Um, some of those questions might lead them to to maybe stop doing the business, which is fine. We can recycle entrepreneurs, right? Uh, uh, they can go they can go do something bigger and better. But that's how I that's how I try to add value, right? Uh, the other way I try to add value uh, is that we're very open. Uh, me personally, and and Monk's Hill, my, my firm as a firm, to uh, with our, our address book, our connection, uh, like our connections to other folks, right? So one of the things is, you know, what do you you know what do you need from us? And this doesn't have to be a company that we've invested in. And in fact, I would say 99% of the time we're helping companies that we haven't invested in yet, right? Uh, with uh, connections, connections to earlier, uh, you know, earlier investors, connections to other companies that that are, that are complementary, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I think those are two key things that I that I that I do in in uh, meetings. Right, uh, that I take uh, to try to add value, and at the same time, it helps them, but it also helps my sense of productivity. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember um, recently uh, I actually um, met a VC. Um, so, you know, uh, actually, one, one commonality between all of us yeah. is that uh, we, we kind of been on both sides. We've been on both sides. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, being an investor and then churning a VC or, 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 or vice versa. Vice versa. Right. And I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, what, one of the meetings I had was, um, it was a very short one. Um, the guy just sat down and uh, asked me something real quick about the model and everything. He said, oh yeah, you know, I invested in something similar in India. Um, but you know what, uh, you already raised enough money, you don't need any more. Um, so um, yeah. It's, it's like, I gotta go. It's a pass. It's a, you know, it's a pass for us. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I actually really appreciate it. I mean, I, you know, yeah. hey, there's, there's none of that sort of dragging it on, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah let's, let's meet again. Or, or why don't you find a lead or, you know, different sort of yeah. excuses that, that sometimes um, I think uh, VC use to, to make sure that they don't sort of say no and then later on having to have to try to get back into the deal. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, from the perspective of a, of a founder, I mean, that, that was very refreshing. Uh, and so we kept in touch and, and uh, yeah. became friends. Um, so, so it was good. It was good. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a very important point. There are a lot yeah. of a lot of people in venture, right? They'll drag out. Yeah. The, the, they, they won't make a decision, right? Yeah. It doesn't cost us anything, quote unquote, to yeah. to uh, just say, oh, that sounds interesting. Send me some more info and just drag it out. So you always have the opportunity to invest, right? But uh, actually, as a firm, we're very disciplined about a fast no. Yeah. Right. If we're not leaning in, get back to them. Let them know. Be helpful. Uh, you know, offer something, uh, but give them the fast no. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, him or her. Right. Yeah. So. So speaking about um, the Vietnam market, uh, since you've been investing here, yeah. uh, when you meet these investors, um, do you feel like they're experienced enough to really, really take what you're saying and fully understand? The, the extent of the questions that you're asking, mm -hmm. um, and then also when you try to go for this fast no, right? Yeah. What, what is what's fast, yeah. right? In Vietnam, what do you consider fast, and, yeah. and what is necessary yeah. to really get to know the company? Uh, so you said when you meet investors, you mean when I meet the Sorry, when you meet the entrepreneurs. Yeah. yeah. So let me answer the, 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 second, the second half first, right? Which is a fast no to us is usually a decision within a week, yeah. right? Uh, and actually, uh, and uh, no later than a week, actually. And if it's a relatively clear no will actually answer in the meeting itself, right? Uh, and uh, we'll say the, the partners will answer a fast no faster than, uh, than an associate might, because they might want to check back with, with the partnership, but no more than a week, our next partnership meeting, essentially, right? Um, do folks understand uh, sort of the, the, the gravity or the intent of the questions? I think by and large, they do, okay? Um, by and large, they do when we talk about uh, a lot of things. I think the, the one sort of gap, maybe, is uh, when, it, when, when doing um, um, the, the market analysis, the total available market analysis, right, what we call the TAM, right? We get a lot of hand-waving um, when we ask about TAM, 
right? Well, it's kind of hard in Vietnam. <laughs> not so much research available. Yeah, there's not so much research, but, but so what, what we look for there, quite honestly, is uh, first principles, right? Yep. So, so can this founder go back to first principles and build up their TAM based on some, you know, first principles thinking, some logical thinking and constructing this market? It could be a brand new industry where you don't know how big the market is, but you know, can they go through that process, right? As opposed to, you know, doing something that's clearly niche and going, well, retail is a so-and-so billion, therefore we're attacking a so-and-so billion dollar market, right? It's like, well, no, you're not really, uh -huh. right? Um, and, and I don't know if that's actually lost or just wishful thinking, not understood or just wishful thinking, um, but, but, but that is one thing that has been more difficult here, right? I found good teams, but attacking, um, uh, sometimes attacking very small market problems. Yeah, right. um, and and but convinced that they're attacking, uh, you know, big market problems. Yeah, I think uh, at least if you ask about TAM, um, you, you you're in a way forcing people really thinking about like who are they trying to sell it to. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of uh, startups they start with a solution like okay, let's use blockchain to do something. Yeah. Um, and, and not really focusing on well, who am I serving yeah. and exactly how big is that opportunity? So, yeah. I mean, and they can say well, you know, blockchain is um, borderless, therefore my market is the the world yeah, and, and yeah, I think that yeah, that uh, yeah. by you asking them the TAM yeah. it really forces hey you know which market are you picking are yeah. you Southeast Asia are you just Vietnam are yeah. you just Indonesia yeah. etc um, yeah. but uh, the question is um, for you uh, is it a market um, you know w w how do you prioritize the criteria market mm. team um, you know competitive advantage like technology or something else yeah yeah uh, great question. Uh, clearly, all those things come together. A bunch of things come together to make uh, to make uh, a successful billion-dollar company. Right. Right. And in venture, we pretty much need successful billion-dollar companies to make to make the uh, the economics work. Right. Um, but uh, you know, if you sort of had to break it down, uh, it comes down for early stage investors, right? And this is necessarily true if you're a B, uh, C, uh, C, D, private equity. But for folks in the early stages, and I define early stage uh, is everything up to an A, right? Um, I think it really boils down to the team. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we can kind of, you know, we can jump into more about the characteristics of, of, of founders and are they attacking a large enough market? I go back to that, right? Because to me, uh, and we're talking about building a big company, right? To me, a great team, you know, Solving a, a problem in a large market is a recipe for, for success, right? Given enough money, they'll figure it out, right? A great team solving a, 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 a problem in a small market is still going to be a small company, right? It could be a great small company, but a small company, right? Mm -hmm. A lousy team in a great market is not going to execute well, right? right? So, so for us, the first two things I look at uh, is, uh, is team and then market. And, and oftentimes, actually, uh, I was talking to a, a, an investor earlier today, um, said, you know, kind of where do you start your conversations? And I always start my conversations with, tell me about yourself and tell me why you're doing this, right? Tell me about the journey that sort of, that sort of led you here, right? Uh, and then uh, soon after that, it's, you know, the problem solution, and then we go to market sizing, right? But team and markets are the two big things for me. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, uh, in, in you, you're looking at deals. Um, do you expect to see like a regional plan ambition right away? Mm. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, because you know one of the, I mean, you know, one of the things about uh, um, sort of uh, entrepreneurship is, is you got to focus. You got to be yeah. like doing one thing, yeah. and you got to be do really doing well. you yeah. know, and and because Southeast Asia in, in a way is grouped as one, but it's very heterogeneous, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. they different stage of development, different sort of uh, even behaviors and even dominant players like, yeah. you know, Vietnam has all the Facebook and Google yeah. while other country like Indonesia might not, or, you know, et cetera. So um, do you, I guess like, um, would you uh, prefer to see, you know, uh, a regional ambition mm -hmm. from day one or, or, you know, is it more like, okay, well, you know, let's start in Vietnam and uh, I'm, I'm funding you for Vietnam, but yeah. Someday yeah. it become a regional yeah. company. Yeah, uh, I think the answer to that is it depends, and, and I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll answer that uh, with two examples okay. uh, that we've done. I talked earlier about the, this 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 um, right, the, uh, the, 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 the healthcare yeah. company. Um, yeah. That that started off as a pure uh, Vietnam play. Right. Okay. We believe that the market here is big enough. Uh, it's a company called Geo Health, and right, what they right. do is uh, yeah. yeah. So Good so company. yeah, exactly. Yeah. They they uh, yeah they, they they actually take care of the full stack of delivery, right. uh, the full stack of uh, of healthcare. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and not just like matching doctors. Sure. Like that they really take ownership of your of your health right yeah. when you're sick 
they will make you better, yep. right? Uh, and, and that started off as a Vietnam-only play, right? Mm -hmm. With some, some regional aspirations, um, uh, but uh, it's big enough here, right? On the other hand, uh, you, know, you know, we did an, an investment in a company called Elsa that's actually trying to yeah. speak, uh, uh, teach people to speak proper uh, standard American English, right? That's a global play from day one, right. okay? Uh, they launched their app, it goes out there, uh, very organically, you know, millions and millions of downloads everywhere. Vietnam's a big market for them, mm -hmm. right? This was our home market, yeah. uh, but uh, they're, they're sort of global from day one, wow. right? So the, it's nuanced, it depends, but regional aspiration is, is, uh, is pretty key. And it's not so much that they need a solid plan and they need to go attack all markets at once. It's can you see this founder crossing borders? Do they have you know, the, the, the right mentality, the aptitude and whatnot to cross borders. Can they do it, right? Whether or not you go, where you go deep before you go wide or you go wide before you go deep, that I think depends on the business. And so I think the answer is nuance. But does this team, does this founder, does this team, you know, kind of have the goods to go do it? How, how do you judge that? That is, uh, it's a good question, right? Uh, I, I think you can judge that partially by how, uh, so, so we, we've, de we've dealt business in, in uh, a lot of countries, right? And I think, I, I, I can't pin it down to just a few things, but I think when you deal with people, their openness to ideas, okay, their openness to looking at things from a different perspective, uh, which I think is a, a pretty key component into entering different markets because you have your stack and that's a partial playbook that might or might not be, like different parts of it might or might not be applicable. And so you have to, you have to, under, you have to be open-minded enough to understand the nuances of the market you're entering, you have to be, um, you have to have sort of the, 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 the ability to connect with business partners there that's not native to you, right? Convince them to do business with you, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I think there's, uh, there's subtle traits in there that we can generally look for. But I assume that you would fund them based on one initial market because you know that de determines sort of how yeah. much capital yeah. acquisition costs etc um yeah. you know because you know obviously yeah. if you try to target yes. the u.s market versus vietnam uh acquisition yeah. costs is, is, is a lot different right yeah. so so you would just have to assume that they're gonna yeah yes yeah. yes okay. absolutely i mean we're early stage uh series a investors right okay. so you have some semblance of product market fit right. and you're ready to try your initial scaling Right. So, 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 like in the in uh, you know in the, that that might be okay. We're launching in in Ho Chi Minh City. We're doing well. We like to expand to other uh, to other parts of the country. We're gonna try that. Right. A B, a growth investor, would go in and maybe think about mm -hmm. um, about that. But when we fund, we're we're already thinking about who's coming in next. Ah, okay. Right. That's good. Because uh, because because yeah yeah. I mean we're, we're Series A investors, and and rarely is an A enough to go all the way, sure, sure. right? And so we do think about that. And so you do think, okay, how, how, how would this team, this founder, you know, uh, behave in, in certain markets, behave against a certain, a certain different type of investor, right? Uh, and do we see them uh, potentially getting follow-on funding? Right? I think that's part of the uh, criteria. Uh, let's go back to the concept of the full stack company, yeah. right? So um, I think in Silicon Valley and in a lot of other areas, a company should really focus on one thing, yeah. right? Create their SaaS product or create their whatever product and do really well at it. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because I think in Vietnam, you mentioned that you know, the company should go deeper than that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think it's partially driven by opportunity, okay? Uh, the, to me, the, the supply chain in Vietnam and Southeast Asia, and I'm using the word supply chain pretty loosely to mean sort of all the participants in providing goods and services, right? Uh, it's so unoptimized right, so manual, so unoptimized that there's a chance to use technology, right, well, what we at the firm call the technification of services, right, a chance to use technology to get a 3x, 2x, 3x, 5x, maybe 10x improvement, okay, in optimizing this, this, this broadly speaking, so these people, the, So the founders have to go in and, and improve processes in addition to creating the technology stack? Yeah, yeah, Is that what you mean? yeah. It, it's a chance to own Think of it as a chance to own the customer experience end to end. Yeah. Okay. So whether that's in last mile delivery, okay, uh, and making sure that you're accountable to the customer, like our, like 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 um, uh, like Ninja Van, right? You know, the, delivering in Southeast Asia is hard. Addresses are not filled out and all this good stuff. They use AI and machine learning, a bunch of things like that to do this accurately. But with Ninja and then tech to optimize routing, you can actually as a as a as a uh, a consumer have, with a package being delivered. Right? You can change your delivery destination when your package is being delivered that, that same day on the fly. Right? 
So that's, wh that's what we kind of mean by it is so, it's sort of so broken before, okay, that there's a chance to go reimagine this stack. And then, whereas in the US, a lot of times things are, are, are good enough, right? Credit cards were kind of good enough. We got it down where we don't sign below $50. And so are you really going to go replace and do QR codes and look, you know, think about how long uh, um, uh, NFC got, got, uh, took to roll out, right? And so here I think there's a, ch there's a much more chance to create this impact and own that customer journey end to end. Uh, and so that's what we mean by, by the technification of, of, of services. And, a lot, and, and the second part of this is that a lot of things, um, uh, a few, uh, there have been a few sectors that have been very, very tough for, to apply tech towards without sort of owning the stack, right? Medicine has been one of those. Education has been one of those. Um, property has been one of those, as you know, right? Uh, and, and so in some of these industries that people have tried sort of over and over, light listing service and things like that, what we're finding even in the US is the folks that actually go in and, um, well, you want to sell your house? We're not just going to list it. We're going to buy it from you. We're going to, we're going to do something. We're going to take out, and we're going to take the, the responsibility to go sell it, right? We're finding those guys are taking a lot of market share. Right? And you're no longer valued as this thin tech layer for a property agent. You are the property agent. You're just 5x. But is, that, is this scalable, though? It, it, it feels um, a lot less uh, technology scaling and yeah. more kind of on the ground, hands-on yeah. yeah. process. W w when the technology allows your, in this case, agents to be 5x more productive or 3x more productive, that's a significant techno technological advantage. Okay. Right? Uh, you know, your, your, your incumbent isn't, isn't necessarily going to be there. Right. Yeah. So, so are you looking for entrepreneurs that um, have really deep experience in the industry? Because right? uh, I see in the U.S., you know, people are, you graduate from MBA school, you go somewhere, you see a problem, and you start a business, and it, you know, it just grows. And you have no history in that industry. Right? So, so with this full stack concept, it seems like you probably need to have at least five, ten years experience in the industry to really understand the inner workings. Yeah. Right? Is that what you're looking for? Or? Uh, b believe it or not, not necessarily. Okay. Right? Um, uh, we look, I think one of the biggest things we look for is thoughtfulness, okay, uh, in a founder, right? Uh, how thoughtful are they are about, about the problem, there's, there, there's solutions to the problem, um, you know, thoughtfulness in, in many different aspects, right? But actually, if you look at uh, Ninja Van, right, uh, I'll bring that up again. Um, uh, you know, Chang Wen, the founder, didn't come from a logistics background, came from a trading background, right? So very much his approach, I think, in the early days, right, was uh, this is a trading problem. I have a, a you know a bunch of uh, it's a it's a trade it's a trade optimization and went on to transform last mile delivery in Southeast Asia, yeah. right. So we have examples in our portfolio of just thoughtful founders, you know, first principles thinking applied towards a problem, coming up with solutions and then going and 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 just working their you know their behinds off to actually to actually go go execute on that. And I think it's possible, yeah. right. Before I did my gaming company, I didn't do a gaming company. Right? And so I'd be a little bit of a hip hypocrite if I said uh, we only look for experience. That said, right, there's certain, you know, there's certain industries, right? Um, uh, well, not certain industries. The experience helps. And then certainly if you don't have in your t you know, within you, there is a, there's a, a broader team, right? So can you, you know, do you see this founder attracting the right talent that they need? Yeah. Right? Uh, so, um, so, yeah, you don't have to be a doctor to go do you know, uh, this, 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 this uh, you know, to do geo health, for instance, right? Right, right. Yeah. See, so it sounds like uh, if you have a full stack company, um, you know, I guess the, the, the financial part of it become, you know, a, a bigger weight, mm. uh, you know, and, and maybe the, the technology become a lesser percentage because you're doing the whole stack and yeah. the whole stack is likely not going to be all tech. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the whole stack would, would likely involve um, financing and a bunch of other stuff, right? Yeah. For example, yeah. you mentioned like uh, Open Door or yeah. any of those players, yeah. Um, yeah. They, yeah. they use a lot of cash. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I guess in this, in this great um, sort of uh, bull market, uh, or at least, um, you know, before the, the, the pending uh, global <laughs> recession, full stack makes sense. But yeah. what, what, if, what if afterward, I mean, do you think that it's still going to be... Yeah. Obviously, the, the goal of full stack company yeah. is to, to provide the best experience, right? Yeah. I mean, if you, yeah. just, if you yeah. just can do the whole thing yeah. from one company, then that's the best. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. Yeah, what happened? No, full stack can often require more assets than, right. than your traditional sort of like asset light, just pure tech layer, right? right? right. But recession or not, you remember, uh, we'll go back to the uh, property. These agents have been there. Yeah. Right, uh, they've been in as part of the system. The economy has supported it. Right, right. Continues. These full stack companies have agents that are just three x, 
5x more productive using right. technology. And that advantage doesn't go away in a recession or non-recession, okay? All right. So the assets are necessary to deliver the service, but the assets actually in many cases of many industries that we're transforming were already there, right? I mean, at some, at some point we end up dealing with physical goods, mm -hmm. right? At some point a doctor needs to, you know, put a stethoscope on you, at least for the next, you know, decade or two decades, right? Uh, before remote diagnostics become kind of a big deal, right? Uh, you're making the biggest purchase of, 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 your, of, of your life, right, in a house, uh, may, may, you know, talking to a person, right, it might be a component for a while, right? Uh, and so I, I don't think, I don't think the, uh, you, you're optimized regardless of whether the, the economy is up or down, right? The overall industry obviously is gonna go up or down. If there's a, another housing bubble, of course, you know, people buy less homes, right? But that doesn't make you any less efficient. In fact, you're still as, you're still uh, more efficient than, than the, the incumbent. Right, so so I don't think it's uh, so that doesn't that doesn't come into our determination. Okay, how, how do you um, how do you uh, think about the fa the comment and this is relating? So, I'm, I'm uh, you know we, we shouldn't spend too much time <laughs> on one topic, but uh, maybe my last qu question on it is, uh, so um, you know the there's there's a, a lot of companies like um, Compass and you know various companies mm -hmm. that that you know sort of have the criticism that. Um, it's, it's still mainly even like Liang Jia in, in China is the yeah. same agent like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, you cannot get rid of that human factor, uh, and and then but then the, the, you know it, it seems like the technology doesn't really help as much. Um, it, I, I would assume that technology is is supposed to help you create some kind of a a, um, um, a network effect uh, or, or you know some some something like that. But um, it, it, in in that type of business, it's really just. Um, the technology is uh, merely just uh, sort of uh, maybe the back end, the back office ERP and, and managing it yeah. to be more efficient. But, yeah. but the bulk of it is still a lot of human and, and actually a lot of offline present. I, you know, I, I went to China recently, like Langjia is everywhere, yeah. you know, and, and so Compass, I'm sure, um, one of the criticisms is, is they have so many, so many uh, um, agents, yeah. um, you know, and, and they're yeah. not making money compared yeah. to, say, yeah. uh, uh, Rheology or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, that, is that something that you're seeing as a trend that people um, are doing full stack and then kind of like, yeah, I, I don't really care if the technology does much or not? <laughs> no, I, um, no. Well, I, I hope that's not a trend. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I hope that's not a trend. Look, at, at the end of the day, Right, uh, all this tech in place. Uh, let's take a company like Ninja Van. Okay, until we develop uh, uh, te teleportation, okay, uh, someone needs to, to. There needs to be a van to bring right. me the physical good. Agree. Okay, uh, and so it's it's how quick it's optimizations of those vans. Right, those drivers, those vans, uh, what goes in the back of the truck, optimizing when a when when a when a when a user decides to change the destination, being able to deal with that. Right, and that does have. A network effect. In this case, it could be customer delight. Okay. In the case of property, okay, tech can give transparency. Mm -hmm. Okay, which itself having a lot of data. So this becomes sort of your data moat, right? Um, uh, transparency in terms of pricing. People trust that the price that the agent says they're going to get is going to be market. That 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 makes you more efficient, right? And so tech is still a very big part of this. Uh, but we don't deny that some industries, some sectors are are uh, you know you, you you still need a physical you know, a physical interaction at some point, right? But, but I, so I hope that's not the trend, that people are saying, okay, the tech's not really important. The tech can be really important, especially as you scale. It will give you an unnatural advantage as you scale, Yeah. right? And that's the whole point. It's the whole point is to use tech to be 3x more efficient. When you're 3x more efficient, 5x more efficient than your, than your, your incumbent competitor, you can do a lot of things, okay? You can, uh, you can make better customer service. You can lower your pricing, right? As you know, in real estate, there's a model where it's flat fee. Mm -hmm. Right, regardless of the yeah. price of the house, you can do a lot of neat things like that. Right, right? right. Uh, when when you're three x, five x, in some cases, ten x more efficient. Literally, ten x more efficient, right? an order of magnitude. Um, so no, I think I think tech is a. I think I, I hope that's not the trend. I don't see it being the trend, um, and I think in fact it's kind of the opposite. Tech is what enables uh, these full stack models to work. Right. For everything else, right? I'm sh there are entrepreneurs out, out there pitching sort of full stack. With not using tech very uh, well, and that's more of a tech-enabled business. Uh, it's kind of like okay, fine, but you know, <laughs> yeah, and and those we tend not to invest in anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there there is a distinction. No, I, I completely agree with you. I think I'm I'm merely pointing out that there there is some sort of uh, minimal tech type of companies that's sort yeah, of that's going out there calling themselves tech. as yeah. we're, uh, there's, we're a tech. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of them. Agreed. Yeah. So so what I'm hearing is. 
it seems like it's harder to be an entrepreneur uh, to be able to raise money in Vietnam and in Asia because you have to have the technology, you have to have the industry experience or at least know enough to improve processes 10x. Uh, then you also have to be able to speak multiple languages because your native language plus English yeah. in order to go regional and possibly international. So you know, and combined with everything else that you need to know to be an entrepreneur, yeah. right? So. I mean, how have you found the entrepreneurs um, in Asia to be able to stack up against yeah. you know, all of those criteria? Yeah. So the good news is in Southeast Asia, I'll just talk about Southeast Asia and I'll, I'll sort of exclude uh, China and, and, and India from the discussion of Asia uh, and, and Australia. Um, uh, everyone's kind of starting off roughly about the same time, a few, or a, few, a few years ahead, a few years behind. It's not, you know, it's not so, it's not that you go to Singapore, and it's like Silicon Valley, where you're one, you're literally like one step removed from someone who's done it before, right? We're all kind of, you know, sort of figuring this stuff out ourselves, right? Uh, and I don't think Vietnam is any is any is any uh, at a disadvantage to any other country here uh, in that uh, per se, right? Um, uh, the you know in the Indonesia they're speaking Bahasa, right? Um, uh, Malaysia, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm also quite confident in. Um, in that language won't be a barrier. Actually, there's a basic sort of English level that, that our university graduates have. Um, they, they might not speak well, they might have a confidence problem, but we have things like ELSA to help solve some of that, some of those issues. And so the issues are real, right? But I don't think the barriers are insurmountable. I remember when I first started coming back, I started coming back to Vietnam, I think in 2000, uh, 2005, right? Um, and, and folks then were learning uh, Mandarin, and it was happening at sort of really rapid rates. And then it was, uh, or maybe it was reversed, then it was Korean, right? Within a span of three years, I see like tons and tons of people speaking these languages. And so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried on the language aspect of it. As for starting a, a company, right? I think a company starting in Vietnam actually has quite a bit of advantages, actually, right? If you think about it, um, so Vietnam is sizable enough where it draws a lot of interest, right? If you're sitting in, in Laos, for instance, right? It's hard to get a VC to come visit there. The market's too small, you could be great. Um, Vietnam, luckily, you know, 100 million people, roughly 100 million people. It's quite interesting to a lot of VCs. A lot of VCs are flying in, especially the last two or three years. So access to capital is there, right? Um, Vietnam also has this phenomenon of what we call the reverse brain drain, right? Look at us, <laughs> right? Uh, sort of the classic example of that. Very few other countries in Southeast Asia has this in any number, right? So we have both, uh, uh, you know, folks our age, right? Mostly working abroad, coming back. You have both millennials who were actually born in places like the U.S. of Vietnamese descent that are very interested in coming back. And then, and then uh, Vietnam actually sends half of the region's uh, uh, secondary school students to the U.S. Right? So they go there, they, they, half of the region, think about that, we're a sixth of the population and we're sending half of the region wow. uh, school, uh, students to the U.S. They're also coming back, right? all happily coming back. Right? And so, and so, you know, so we have very, very sort of like a raw, smart, you know, sort of talent pool here, coupled with some of this international experience, I think, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna mature quite quickly, actually. Uh, yeah. so, so, so I actually think it's, it's quite, quite a good time to be an entrepreneur here. Well, that, that's a good point. So before anybody jumps on a plane from the U.S. to fly to Vietnam, <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Right, so what are some, some of the challenges, right? So if somebody, you know, grew up in the U.S. and um, speaks mostly English, probably a little bit of Vietnamese, mm. Uh, you know, what do they do? How do they think about entering the Vietnam market? Um, you know, being an entrepreneur in the U.S. is great, yeah. uh, but the opportunity here could be much greater, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so they want to come here and leverage that. Yeah. Uh, what, are, what are some of the tips that you would say people should consider? Yeah. Um, okay, so I was an entrepreneur uh, from the U.S., and I went to China first, and I didn't speak any Mandarin at the time, right? Uh, so the first thing to do is learn the language. <laughs> right. If you're not good at Vietnamese, that's okay. You have some basis, right? Uh, go learn the language. Read and write, or just spoken? Uh, so definitely spoken, uh, and and you should you should learn you should learn to read, right? Uh, which 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 entails writing. I mean, luckily we're fo we're a phonetic alphabet system here, right? Uh, so it's quite easy, and uh, as opposed to in China where I was trying to learn characters, right, which was quite 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 difficult, right? Uh, luckily the grammar is relatively simple, also. Right, so learn. Uh, so one, learn the language. Uh, it's going to allow you to uh, connect better with your 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 employees, your partners, uh, and it's going to develop uh, um, you know your general network, which is needed. Right. We are, um, 
So learn before you land. No, or no it's okay. You, it's it's okay to learn in country. I, like I, once again, I'd be a hypocrite if I said learn before you land. But I didn't. I uh, I probably spoke three words of Mandarin before before I got to Shanghai. Right? Like how, how long does it take? <laughs> how long does it take to get to a point where you can actually converse and you know have a business meeting? I think that's different for, for for different people. I think different people pick up languages faster, and a lot of times it's how much effort you put into it. I've seen folks go to China, do a three month intensive program, come out. And you know they, they can go work at a Chinese company speaking Ch you know broken Mandarin for a while, but then get ver fluent very quickly. I've seen folks who are lazy about taking classes, and it takes them a long, long time. So I think it's you know what, it's what you put in, right? Um, so so one is learn the language, right? And two is um, come with conviction, okay, but be open-minded at the same time, okay. Uh, so, so certain things that, that we uh, sort of hold near and dear to our heart, certain things about us that we shouldn't change, we shouldn't compromise. For everything else, be open-minded, right? Uh, at, 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 don't think you know the best way just because that was maybe the best way even in the U.S. and you do know it, uh, or whatever, whatever country you come from, come, come open-minded, right? Uh, and I think, I, think, I think those two things coupled together um, is a good start. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to... Uh, um Add more to uh, what you said about Vietnam. I just want to give a, a plug to, to Vietnam uh, <laughs> since we are here. Um, you know, great points. Uh, the, the 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 you know the different um, quite uh, sort of uh, advantages that you mentioned. Um, there's uh, two more, which is a very young population, or younger than us. Unfortunately, <laughs> seventy five percent yeah, 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 of the yeah, population yeah, is younger yeah, than us, yeah, uh, yeah. and and very quick to adopt to technologies and everything. So it's great, uh, and and uh, and also the fact that um, the engineers here um, are probably the best in Southeast Asia. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry for the other countries in Southeast Asia, but <laughs> but I, I really uh, yeah. this is not just one one man's opinion. I I, I kind of did a survey, asked many people. Yeah. What, what do you think? Is that is that true or not? Uh, well, we invest regionally. Okay, okay. Right? <laughs> you cannot say. I, so, I don't want to put so, you on the spot. Uh, uh, I personally <laughs> think that Vietnam has the best engineers, and uh, maybe even one more, which is that uh, I think the government is very supportive uh, mm. of, of of the startup ecosystem yes. and everything. And, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and there's no big firewall of any sort, uh, so mm -hmm. that's also mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And I guess I, I would add that um, the community here is actually really open. That's right. Right. Um, I think if you go to more developed markets, uh, it's it's really hard to make friends, to meet people, to kind of get absorbed into the ecosystem. And uh, Vietnam people are still very open, uh, you know, very happy to collaborate, very open with sharing and, and co-investing and co-founding. And so, so I think it's, it's a great place to kind of jump in, uh, not have any experience and be adopted really quickly and kind of get up to speed very fast. Yeah. You know, I, I see a lot of investors that, that come in, right, uh, through, through town, uh, looking at, you know, from Singapore, from, from China, from various places. And they're always sort of amazed at the energy of Vietnam, especially Ho Chi Minh City, right? The the uh, the entrepreneurial energy, the this this feeling that you know our worst days are behind us and our best days are in front of us. The, the, anything the, is possible. Anything is possible. They feel it, right? And and there's this and there's this the, the hustle, but in a good way, right? It's like a good hustle of everyone. Everyone's got their day job, but they're taking some class somewhere, you know, at night, right? And that, that's why we, I mean, one of the big industries here is education, obviously, yep. right? A, a, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of education outside the classroom, right? Uh, and so that 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 energy, yeah. right? And that's uh, you know. Feeds into what Lynn says, which is the 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 you know these meetups and and collaboration and cafes are buzzing and and if you spend any time in, in Silicon Valley and you know on University Avenue nowadays, Sand Hill Road before, that sort of energy you can feel, right? Well, I, I would cool. say it's a combination of the energy in New York, right? Mm -hmm. When I landed in New York, it was just so energizing, yeah. just walking down the street, yeah. and then you combine that with the um, the hustle of Silicon Valley, yeah. right? Everybody wants to do something, yeah. everybody can do something, they're just working on something. Yeah. You combine that with the chill coolness of LA, yeah. right? Because, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, say, I never lived in LA. Yeah. That, that, that was a plug for her. So. <laughs> LA girl here. Yeah. Uh, but but you, know, you combine all three cities um, together, and then that's Ho Chi Minh City, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. You can that's, have a little bit of a great Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. completely agree. You know, any advice, uh, you know, before you, before uh, somebody want to start a company, um, you know, any advice for them? Like, you know, how do they know when they're ready? How, 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 you know, how do they know that it's time to take the plunge? So I'll take a step back and I'll say that to me, the right way to approach uh, starting a company 
is you've figured out a problem. You see something in a problem and a solution to that problem that sort of no one else sees. You're looking around and, and you're like, wait, this thing should be there already. Why is it not there? Okay. And then, and then so you have that in your head and you're going to go research to see if that's really the case. Right. And then beyond that, you should start talking to your friends. Right. And when I did my company, when I talked to my friends, I said, hey, I got this idea. I already know all the reasons why it's great. Don't tell me why it's great. Tell me all the reasons why it won't work. Okay. And, and you're going to get all these, uh, all, all these very good questions, hopefully, about why it might not work. Did you see this competitor? Did you not? So how do you know when to do a company? When you've, when you've answered, when you've had all those objections and you've thought about it and you've researched it and you still can't sleep at night because this thing needs to be built, you've answered, maybe you didn't even convince them, but you've answered it on your head, right? And you're just sitting there and for, you have restless nights thinking, itching that this should be built. Go build that company, right? And, 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 it, might, and it might or might not be a venture funded company, okay? Uh, only a fraction of good companies, good companies should be venture funded, but go build that company. Right. Yeah. Because uh, you, you need to be solving a real problem. You need to be intellectually honest about all the you know all the things, the competitors, all the things that 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 the obstacles that you will face. And when you have it in your head, and you have a plausible answer in your head, where you convince yourself, okay, and you can't sleep to the point where you can't sleep, heck, go solve it. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I, I agree. I think uh, you got to start with. Um, you know, a problem that you want to solve or some kind of need that, that uh, need addressing. Yeah. Um, but I, I think for a lot of maybe potentially our audience, um, you know, like, you know, they're going to work, they're getting a good job, yeah. uh, you know, um, they always have this uh, desire to, yeah. to start something, yeah. um, you know, and, and uh, they just don't really know when, when yeah. they're ready. Uh, you know, I remember speaking to a lot of uh, students and said, you, you are not ready. Um, you, you need to at least work few years um, at least at a startup to see how yeah. crazy and, and yeah. how everything is and, and, yeah. and then you, you feel like that's the life that you want yeah. Yeah. Um, you know and, and you know how much sacrifice you have to make yeah. uh, then then that's that's maybe yeah. at least the, the first thing and yeah. maybe even like try to get into a role like a product management or yeah. sale or something yeah. Yeah. Um, but but yeah I completely agree with you that yeah. um, if you don't have that why yeah. Uh, it's, it's almost yeah. like, okay, you know, just get a job, yeah. uh, maybe work at a startup, yeah. the stock yeah. is good, you know. Yeah. I sometimes get asked, um, you know, what advice do you give someone uh, who's starting a company, yeah, yeah. right, or starting a startup, right? And the advice is don't, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, like, agree. don't do one, don't do it, right? Yeah. Don't do it because it, 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 it's so taxing, There's so, yeah. unless yeah. you can't sleep at night yeah. <laughs> and you have to go do it, right. Right. then go do that one, right? Uh, because you're right, it, it is, it's a 24 by 7 endeavor. Uh, you, I mean, you both know this well. It's a 24 by 7 endeavor. Uh, you live it, you, you eat it, you breathe it, yeah. uh, a bunch of other things it. <laughs> right? so, do you yeah. feel like the, the hype has really gotten to a point where people do it because they think it's cool? Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, like 10 years ago, you had to go talk to parents and convince the parents to let the kids yeah. do a startup. Yeah. And now it's generally accepted yeah. and people are doing it just because they think it's a great path. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, do you see the, a lot of people pitching to you um, kind of clueless in a way uh, of what, the, what, what it's going to entail to make it really succeed. Uh, so, so I do like the part that it's accepted now, right? Uh, and it happened pretty fast, actually, which is really amazing, right? That it's okay to go do a startup, right? Uh, it's not, you know, it's not that you go need to go work at a bank or be a, an academic or teach or something like that, right? Um, so that part's cool, uh, but it is cool right now to, uh, it is kind of in vogue to actually go do a startup, right? And so you see a lot of folks engineering problems uh, instead of doing it from that, you know, that, that point of view, if I see a problem, I see a solution that no one else sees. Like, what's my secret, right? And I can't sleep about, uh, I can't sleep about un un unless I do it, right? Um, and then you can't sleep after you do it. But anyway, <laughs> that's, that's a whole different story, right? Um, and, and so you see folks that are, that are there, but it's pretty transparent. And so it's okay, right? Uh, we need experimentation. We need people to learn. And actually, some of those folks, uh, they might get a little bit of seed and they might fail. They might succeed. Uh, but they, they, they'll figure it out, right, uh, pretty quickly. The market, will, the market will tell them, right, and then they might discover their true passion in there. So I am, um, you know, I, you know, no, no, you know if, if there's capital and people aren't, like, taking super high risk, mortgaging their, their, their you know, the kids' education or their, their you know, their, their, uh, their, their homes, right, necessarily, uh, not, you know, although that, that's happened plenty of times, um, let's go, go, you know, go, go out, go out and do these things, right? It's uh, it's it's good for the ecosystem, actually.
right? It's good for uh, angel investors to, to fund and learn, right? It's good for entrepreneurs to, to, to learn. And so I don't, you know, I do see it. I don't necessarily view it as bad, per se. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would like folks, I, I look at it as a, a stepping stone to doing something that you're, you are passionate about, right? As opposed to sitting and venting, okay, well, you know, um, inventing a problem, inventing a, a, a problem. Well, speaking of the, uh, the funding ecosystem, yeah. uh, I think uh, a few years back, there was a gap in the Series A, right? Yeah. A lot of seed, Series A. Now it feels like there's Series A, but maybe there may be a gap in seed or maybe a gap in later. What, what, what's your perspective on that? Is there a gap within the funding ecosystem and you know, where would we need more investors yeah. putting in their money? Yeah, so, so if you, speaking specifically about Vietnam, right? Um, I think, uh, take a step back, I think a few years ago, right? I'll call it 15, 16, right? I think Vietnamese companies had an unex uh, unrealistic expectation to go from seed to A, right? Um, and, and back then, we were only worried about an A. We weren't even necessarily worried about a B yet, right? Although we kind of, there's a certain amount of a leap of faith that you have to have in an ecosystem that it will come. And when Monk's Hill first started, we certainly didn't, didn't you know, we, we certainly didn't have B Capital and, and New Asia Partners and um, uh, 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 Asia Partners, a few of those folks, right, that are doing B. Um, but, and, and, and folks have started to, step, and so there was a healthy seed and there were some good A investors flying around, okay? Um, but there was this little gap in there of, of this pre-A, right? Post-seed pre-A, right? You got the basic product built, didn't really quite launch, not quite there, needs to make some pivots along the way, right? Uh, some adjustments to your business plan. We're starting to see that filled more and more, right? Um, in, to, in today's dollars, probably, you know, the, the million to million and a half range, right? Before you're ready or maybe even two, before you get to an A. Um, beyond an A, we're seeing healthy follow-ons, right? Um, uh, you know, obviously it's a funnel, right? And so, I'll probably should go this way, right? It's a funnel. Uh, and so there'll be, you know, there'll be less B, there'll be less, less B deals, right? And, but there are people who are specializing in just Bs in the region, right? And they're flying in and they're very, very active. And then beyond the Bs, we're seeing a lot of the, the PE firms and, and uh, a lot of times maybe CVCs, the um, family offices that are filling that gap. So I think, I think if you look at uh, the last uh, you know, 10, if you want to go back that far, but three, three or four years, there's no better time to start a company than now. Now I think it's there. Uh, it could be beefed up in certain areas. Uh, so I would like to see more pre-A. Right? I, see, I see a lot of seed activity happening. I would like to see more pre-A uh, before the companies are ready for, for a firm like Monk's Hill to go in. Um, and, and, but I'm happy with, uh, with the options our companies have in raising their bees, right? Um, of course, we're going to see more because it's a region wide and, you know, this, that we're going to see more firms, right? Because this is happening across the board, not just in Vietnam, right? So I guess uh, maybe the last question, uh, we want to make sure that we are always bringing uh, very good guests uh, like yourself um, to share their stories and insights. Mm. Um, who should we tap next? Uh, uh, okay. You know? Uh, a, so, on, so on this the is the entrepreneur. Can, can, I'll, I'll nominate one. Uh, can I nominate yeah, one, of one, each, one of each? I'll, one of I'll each. do one entrepreneur and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and one investor. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm going to pick out of our own portfolio because oh, okay. I, yeah, I, yeah. I know them the best, yeah, yeah. right? Not, not meant to be biased, but I think you should invite uh, Raghu Rai okay. in from uh, GeoHealth. GeoHealth, right. Uh, okay. Raghu's a, um, you know American of Indian descent in Vietnam doing a startup. So I think that's just kind of an interesting uh, in, in, in healthcare, for, for, right, for goodness sake. So I think that's going to be an interesting story. Okay. Right? And then I think the next I'll pick is actually uh, a homegrown VC, I think V, over at ESP, ESP Capital. Cool, yeah. That right? is, yeah. is quite interesting. I, I, I talked to her a lot and I find her very, very insightful and I think she'll add uh, quite a bit to this audience. Cool, right? cool. Okay, so, make sure you uh, tag her. So, so, um, yeah, so <laughs> those are my two. Okay. <laughs> One of each. Very, very good recommendation. I completely agree. Yeah, um, cool. All right, so what's the most unforgettable pitch that you've ever seen? We see quite a bit, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm almost embarrassed to say this one, but this is a true bona fide <laughs> pitch. <laughs> I got okay. pitched a live stream uh, strip poker game. Uh, wow. Strip poker okay. app. So, okay, how, just maybe one more. You're, you're adding so much uh, good insights. Um, how about one story that uh, either is a founder story or, or um, some kind of story that you found uh, that, that you, you encounter in Southeast Asia uh, in, the, in the startup uh, ecosystem that, that was very inspiring that you would like to share? Inspiring story. No. <laughs> I suppose every founder's story is in, in a way inspiring, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, going from zero to, to something amazing. Um, I, I, think, I think there are a lot of startups out there, as we said earlier, that, that you know, people start it for kind of the wrong reasons, right? Yeah. Um, but there's some interesting ones that when you meet them and why they started it, 
it comes uh, quite a bit from the heart, right? Yeah. And without sort of getting into too, too much personal details, there was a, um, there's a genetics testing company here mm. in, in, in Vietnam, right? Uh, founded by, uh, by two PhDs, right? One yeah. in computer science, one, one in, in, in uh, microbiology, uh, and specifically hereditary cancer. And uh, the story, uh, the, the female founder uh, was, was really quite, in, in, uh, quite, quite heartfelt in that she lost, I believe she lost both her dad and her grandfather to hereditary cancer early on in life, and she dedicated her life to uh, cancer research. And, um, and in particular, what they were doing was if you test and you get early, you might have more options for how to treat that. Very, very, very inspiring, coming you know, right, right here in Vietnam. Uh, um, you know, two, two Vietnamese founders uh, that you know, they, they did their PhDs in the U.S., um, but you know, they're coming back to the, this genetics testing company. Yeah. Very, very. I mean, you look, you listen to that, and you're like, wow. Yeah. Th those are all the right reasons, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, never mind genetics. Obviously, uh, you know, big, big company. They're they're still a seed seed company, so a little early for us, right? Uh, but quite inspirational. Do you know where they are now? Uh, in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. The, they, uh, so, so, so uh, once again, you know, we try to be helpful, so we do get we do get updates uh, on where they're going, and I believe they just finished raising um, an oversubscribed seed round. Oh, that's great. Um, and uh, so they're well on their way uh, with yeah. some very prominent investors, both here and uh, and the U.S. Actually. So, yeah, that's great. Uh, so good for them. You know, the, 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 you hear these things. The stuff that yeah. that's sort of heart heartfelt. You know. Even uh, Elsa, right, Boo, yeah, when she right. first entered Stanford, and she tells about the story of her, her testing really well, right, in English, but when she got there, she spoke, no one understood her, and it was so frustrating, and, and she would raise her hand in, in MBA school and, 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 you know, a case study and offer something, and then, uh, you know, t the professor would just kind of nod, someone else does almost the exact same thing and goes, oh, that's a great idea. She was super, super frustrated yeah. uh, with that. Uh, then did, did the research, found out that, you know, people who, who don't speak standard English get paid less, are deemed as less trustworthy, and really set out to, to, to solve, which is actually, if you think about the majority of the, the, the world, I mean, English is becoming sort of a bit of a de facto uh, business language, but the majority of the world isn't going to speak standard, standard English, if you take American English as, as yeah. standard English, right? Uh, which is a huge problem, so we went out and, ta went out and tackled that, right? Uh, that, that's, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's going to affect a lot of lives. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, 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 these are these are you know some 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 great founder journeys, yeah. uh, and and when we find you know company uh, people founders that are that are uh, attacking problems that they see like this, right, uh, always causes us to take a second look. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the, the founder story is, is uh, always inspiring, regardless yeah. of whether they, they end yeah. up succeeding or yeah. not. Yeah, like I and, said earlier, right? It takes even if it's even if it's, it doesn't have to be sort of that. Sort of deep, even if it's just um, you, you know you love food and 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 and, and you, you have trouble discovering uh, the latest place in town. Yeah. The fact that someone is so passionate about solving that right. problem and they quit their job, right? And they're going to live off peanuts and they're trying to scrape this company together. Is let's so as you said earlier, almost I mean every story is pretty inspiring in itself, right? Um, that's a lot of guts, yeah. right? That most people, quite honestly, don't have. Yeah. Right? Most people, you know, vast majority of the population work at their jobs. They see problems, they complain, but they don't do anything, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they see problems, they even see solutions, but they don't do anything, yep. right? Um, and some of the, a, a handful of these folks that, that we as venture investors invest in see the problem, see a solution, and go out and do something about it. Yeah. Right. A lot of times the best ideas come not when you're sitting in the office, mm -hmm. but when you're out somewhere, when you're taking a shower, when yeah. you're brushing your teeth, yeah. right? So you have to really like that topic right. to have it constantly running yes. in your yeah. mind. Yeah. And that's when you have that aha, I have the solution. Yes. Right. And right. it yes. consumes you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it consumes definitely. you. Yeah. yeah. No, no, so de definitely uh, founder stories, very inspiring. And as well as the, the uh, sort of uh, pioneering investors who want to back them to fulfill their, their dream and ambition. So uh, now we're going to go into some rapid fire questions uh, to get to know Justin a little bit better, do, do a few yeah, yeah. fun questions, well, that, um, just kind of, yeah, l less, fo less formal. Favorite Anything? bar? Favorite, Favorite bar? bar? Layla. Layla, yeah. Oh, okay, oh right. my friend is uh, owner. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, okay. Yeah. I, re I really like the, the atmosphere there. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's sort of aspirational, uh, aspirational folks, aspirational right, right, uh, right, Ho Chi Minh right. City, mm -hmm. yeah. that crowd. I think Leda is a perfect example of product market fit. Yeah. I mean, the, most of the bar is a little bit too high and stuffy, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. right? And, or, and, or, you, or you're on the street. Or, or, or you're on the street. <laughs> and, and this is like really good drinks, good yeah. food. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm promoting too yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, share an experience or uh, 
share about you know uh, um, uh, the one that got away. Uh, but, that could be a company, uh, uh, a a loved one, uh, <laughs> you know, what, anything. What, what what do I stick with the company? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, the one that got away. Should have given the option. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I won't name uh, it, uh, okay. them by name, okay. uh, but there was an e-commerce company here that, okay. I, that I looked at, that I really here liked the Vietnam? team. Here in Vietnam. Okay. That I looked at and I really liked the team. Okay. Um, wasn't really one that got away because they were a little bit, little bit uh, beyond the stage that we oh, were investing, right, but right. It, was, it was on the edge where it was still uh, quite tempting. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was a team I really liked. I thought they executed really well. Yeah. And uh, they continue to grow and, and, and prosper, and, and it's good to see them uh, to, to do that. So that's, that's sort of the one I, that, that I sit and I kind of I know think who about. you're talking about. Yeah, agree. <laughs> completely agree. Yeah, you missed that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that uh, today has been tremendously helpful. You know, you share exactly sort of what we set out to do, which is to basically to get good insights, uh, interesting stories, and, and, and inspiring ideas. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that's been tremendously helpful, I, I think, for everybody that's watching the show. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, cannot uh, express our gratitude to, uh, to you. Uh, this was fun. Thank you for having me. Yes, thanks was, for joining us. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. All right.